Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'm going to give you a short baseline to learn that should help with getting to grips with that age-old question of how do I apply all this theory stuff. So I came up with this simple baseline this morning as an exercise to help one of my students learn the three basic arpeggio patterns starting on three different fingers. Now, if you don't know what I mean by these three basic arpeggio fingerings, then this should be a pretty good lesson for you because uh, these patterns are a good starting point in getting uh, out of that common one octave box shape that everyone seems to get stuck with. Um, you can find loads of my lessons devoted to these patterns on YouTube and TalkingBass.net, so many of you might already know what I'm talking about, but if not, then I'll be going over them really quickly just to begin with. So basically, for any arpeggio that we play, we can start the pattern on one of three fingers. The first finger, the second or third finger, and the fourth finger. And when we do this, we uncover three separate fretboard shapes. Now, most beginners get locked into a single shape for each arpeggio. So if I was to say, play me a C major seven arpeggio, you generally get the standard second finger pattern like that. But we also have the first finger pattern, and we have one starting on the fourth finger. Okay, now I'm going to go through these quite quickly. So basically, you know, you can download the lesson material. I've got all these patterns tabbed out there with fretboard patterns. And, you know, I'm just going to work through these very quickly. And then you can work through them in your own time, you know, after the lesson, just work through them. But Remember that I am going to be showing this baseline that's going to be there to help you learn these patterns. So once you've got those basic fingering patterns under your fingers, you know, and you, you kind of know the general idea of what we're looking at, try the baseline that I'm going to show you and that should really, you know, help with applying it and, uh, and really ingraining them in your memory. So we're going to be looking at three different chord types, the major seven, the dominant seven, and the minor seven. Now, if you don't know those basic arpeggios or you don't know how those uh, chords are constructed, then there's a load of chord construction lessons over at TalkingBass.net and on YouTube, so I'll put uh, some links in the info below, but I'll, I'll give you a quick refresher anyway. So uh, a major seven chord, the arpeggio, because remember an arpeggio is just a chord played one note at a time. The major seven is basically the root note, major third, perfect fifth, and major seventh, or one, three, five, seven. So that pattern on a C there for C major seven would be. Okay, so root, third, fifth, major seventh. C, E, G, B. Okay, and I can put the octave in. Okay, so that's a C major seven. For a C dominant seven, we have exactly the same pattern, but we flatten the seventh. Okay, so. So we play a B flat instead of a B. So that would give us root, major third, perfect fifth, minor seventh, or one, three, five, flat seven. And with the octave. Okay, so major seven, C major seven. C seven, C dominant seven. And remember that a dominant seven is just called seven when you write it as a chord symbol. So C dominant seven is written as C seven, okay? So lastly, we have the minor seven. So that would give us, for that, we have root notes, minor third, perfect fifth, and minor seven. So one, flat three, five, flat seven. Notes for a C minor seven would be C, E flat, G, B flat the octave. Okay, so as I've said before, all this stuff's in the lesson material, so if you have any problems, just download that and work through those patterns. So uh, we have C major seven, C seven, and C minor seven. So that's the three basic chord types, but for each one of those chord types, for each one of those arpeggios, we have three different fingering patterns, okay? So as I said before, when people first learn these arpeggios, they think, and you know, if they were to learn a C7 arpeggio, it's like, oh, okay, C7. And they just move it around. You know, they just move that single fingering around. But there are many, many different fingerings that you could use for any one arpeggio, you know, and that's how we start to learn how to play all over the neck. So, um, I'll very quickly go over these. So we've got one starting on the second finger, which 
you know, that's the one that we've just been using. But we also have the first finger and the fourth finger. So uh, if you follow along with the lesson material, here are those three fingerings. So for the major seven, so we're going to be looking at the C major seven here, the second finger pattern would be... Okay, so we're starting on the C eighth fret of the E string there. We've got C, E, G, B, and then the octave, okay? So, then the first finger pattern, we start with the first finger there. We've got the C, then the E, the 12th fret there. Move on to the A string, we've got the second finger ticking the G, 10th fret. Then we've got the uh, B there, 9th fret of the D string with the first finger, and then the octave, okay? And then finally we have the fourth finger pattern. So we start that C again on the fourth finger. Then we go for the E, seventh fret of the A string there with the third finger. Then the G, fifth fret of the D string with the first finger. Then the B, ninth fret of the D string with the fourth finger. And then we take the octave there, the C at the fifth fret of the G string. So. Okay, so that gives us those three fingering patterns. Second finger, first finger, and fourth finger. And instead of having that little single box shape there, starting at the, uh, you know, the eighth fret there and just working up, you know, between the seventh fret and the tenth fret, we've now spread those notes out so we can play anywhere between the fifth fret and the twelfth fret. Okay, so we're covering a lot more ground. So now onto the dominant seven. So remember, it's going to be the same patterns that we just used, but we're just flattening the seventh in each one of them. So instead of a B, we're playing a B flat. So second finger pattern. Okay. Then we move to the first finger pattern. Okay, so it's the same pattern that we used for the major seven there, but instead of that B there at the ninth fret of the D string, we're playing the B flat at the eighth fret of the D string. So. Okay, so remember, all of this is in the lesson material. And then for the fourth finger pattern, same pattern as the major seven, but we play the B flat there, eighth fret of the D string. Whoops. Okay, so that's the three patterns. So, second finger, first finger, and fourth finger. Okay. Now, finally, let's look at the minor seven. So, for this, we've got the second finger pan. So, C, E flat, G, B flat, and then C. So, for this one, because this is not as common as the first finger pattern. We've got the second finger taking the C there, eighth fret of the E string. Then we've got the first finger taking the sixth fret of the A string. Then the fourth finger takes the G at the tenth fret of the A string. And then the second finger takes the uh, B flat at the eighth fret of the D string. Okay, and then we've got the octave tenth fret of the D string. So, okay. First finger pattern, and this is the more common one. First finger there. So C, E flat, both on the E string there, so the 11th fret of the uh, E string for the E flat. G, 10th fret of the A string. B flat, 8th fret of the D string. And C, octave, 10th fret of the D string. So. And finally, for the fourth finger, fourth finger takes the C there, 8th fret of the E string. Then we've used the, uh, used the second finger to play the E flat at the sixth fret of the A string. First finger for the G, fifth fret of the D string. Fourth finger for the B flat, six, uh, sorry, eighth fret of the D string. And then first finger takes the C, fifth fret of the G string. So, so you'll notice that as we play through these, there's only one note difference between each chord type as we move through. You know, there's the major seven, the dominant seven just flattens the seventh, and then for the minor seven, we flatten the third and the seventh, so it's just one different uh, from the dominant seven. But, uh, you know, you'll get used to that as you're playing through them. So, minor seven again, I'm just gonna play through them. Second finger. First finger. And fourth finger. 
okay? So that's all of the three positions, three fingering patterns for each of the three chord types. So what use are these patterns? Because, you know, when you first see them, it just seems like learning patterns for the sake of learning patterns, you know. It's bad enough that you've got to learn, you know, one pattern for this arpeggio, you know, and you're learning all these different chord types and then all of a sudden, oh no, there's three more patterns, you know, or three patterns for each one. Well, there is an immediate advantage to this and it's being able to stay in one position. Now, if I was going to be playing a bass line um, in the key of F major, you, through a chord progression, 1, 6, 2, 5, so that's F major 7, D minor 7, G minor 7, C7. If I wanted to play a, a, a bass line through that using the chord tones, you know, using those arpeggio patterns in some way, if I was to stick with the most common um, patterns, you know, the uh, second finger pattern for the F major 7, I'd have to use the open string there for the A to, to uh, accommodate that. Then the first finger pattern for the minor seven, because that's the most common one that everybody knows. Then the first finger for the G minor seven. And then the second finger for the C seven. That's a lot of moving around. We're just moving these box patterns all over the place, you know. All the way up there for that D minor seven it would be much, much more useful to be able to stay in one area and know all of the chord tones in that one position. So this is where these patterns come in handy. Um, so first of all, let's just go through that, uh, that sequence there. So we have F major seven. If we were down in this lower area, let's say below the fifth fret, and I wanna play an F major seven, well, the F's there at the first finger. You know, there's no point in playing it with the second finger or the fourth finger because there's nothing below there. So F, you know, you would instinctively go for it with your first finger. Now, that means we can use the first finger arpeggio pattern that we just learned. So F major seven. Okay, so that's perfect. Then the D, the most obvious D to go for is this one here at the fifth fret of the A string. And if we've just been playing there with the first finger, the most obvious uh, finger to use is the fourth finger. And it's, it just sits there right under there instead of moving the hand all the way up here. So I can go for the D with the fourth finger and we've already learned a fourth finger pattern, you know, for the minor seven. So I can rise up through that arpeggio. So that's the fourth finger D minor seven. Okay, I, I can't go up any further to get the octave, but don't worry about that. We're just looking at the palette of notes that we've got in that one area. So, and we're only going up at the moment. Um, in a later lesson, I'll show you how to go down as well, but there's the D minor seven. For the G minor seven, well, the G is right there under the second finger, so we can use the second finger pattern for the G minor seven. And then C seven, the C's right there under the second finger second finger pan, okay? So now instead of moving around all over the place, I can simply play through those arpeggios. F major seven, D minor seven, G minor seven, and C seven. And you'll notice that the hand never moved. It didn't come up here and all around that, you know. It's, it just... Okay, so much more neat. So you can see that those patterns are great and useful, but how do we memorize them? Well, you could just play round them over and over again until you, know, until you memorize them, but I find that method of learning scales and arpeggios a bit sterile and boring. You know, you just end up learning a linear line with no idea of why you're learning them. So the key to learning these patterns, and pretty much anything on bass, is application. You know, we want to create a bass line or melody that's going to help us and give us some context. Um, and the key to doing this is the application of rhythm. Now, without rhythm, all these melodies and bass lines are just notes in stasis. We need to apply rhythm there to, you know, to put it into motion, you know, to put it into a four-dimensional space, you know. So we use rhythm to apply them. And uh, the good thing about using a, a bass line or a... a um, you know, a riff for this is that it, when we play over a drum beat or a chord progression, the rhythm is kind of dictated for us. You know, we can, you know, if there's a certain drum pattern, it's going to kind of dictate the kind of rhythm that we're going to use. So, um, rhythm is key in this. You know, you want to create a bass line or a riff using rhythm, 
using the arpeggios and scales and that will help you in memorizing them. So here's the baseline that you can use for working through those patterns that we've just gone through. And um, I'm just going to use the exact same progression that we've just worked through, the 1, 6, 2, 5 in F major. And I've got a backing track that will help you with this. So, um, so far we've been through those arpeggios. So we'll go through them again, but we're going to put a rhythm to them. So we've got the F major arpeggio, first finger. Then we're going to have the D minor 7, just up to the 7th and back. Then the G minor 7, second finger. And then the C7, second finger. Now those arpeggios, as I've said before, are all in the lesson material. So you, first of all, just work through the arpeggios without any rhythm. Just go through them and just get those patterns under your fingers. Then we can start to apply the rhythm. So the bass line is going to sound like this. So all we're doing is going up through the arpeggio with a certain rhythm. So I'll just go through that slowly. So we begin with the F major 7. Okay, so that's all I've done. I've gone up through F, A, C, E, F, E, C. Okay, so we have that little turnaround at the top with the 7th to the octave. Okay, so again, slowly. So you want to play around that a few times and as I've said before it's all in the lesson material the tab and everything so next up D minor 7 so we have to change it a little bit with this um, because we're not using the octave so we're coming up D F A A C A F D so we work up to the seventh and then just come back down Next, down to the G minor 7, so we've got the G down there at the 3rd fret of the uh, E string, and we come up through the 2nd finger minor 7. So G, B flat, D, F, G, F, D. Finally to the C7, so second finger C, uh, C7 arpeggio, C, E, G, B flat, C, B flat, G, okay? Okay, so remember to go through all that with the tab and, uh, you know, the sheet music that's in the lesson material. Just work through each one separately and then put them all together and we get this, slowly. So when you learn this riff, be sure to always be looking at the arpeggios. You know, don't just learn it as a linear line like you would with some of the other bass lines. You've got to see the arpeggios in here. That's the whole point of it. <laughs> you know, we're learning to memorize these arpeggio patterns. We're not just learning a random bass line because we like the bass line. It's, it's an exercise because there's not that many bass lines where you're going to be using all of the notes of an arpeggio all the time. You know, this is using all those notes in the arpeggio. You know because it's an exercise just to help with memorizing it. So uh, you want to always be looking at the arpeggios and also keep looking at the intervals so that you know which one they are in relation to the root. So when we go through the F major 7, root, 3rd, 5th, and then C the 7th to the octave there, and back to the 5th. You know, you don't just want it to be fret patterns. You want to know what each of these scale degrees is or intervals. Uh, you want to know the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, because you want to know how they sound. You want to know how to apply these, uh, because eventually, once you've learned the patterns, you know, you don't want to be using all of the notes in the arpeggio all the time. You want to be selective. You want to pick out certain ones. You want a bass line that maybe just has a fifth. 
or maybe has a third or you know a seventh in there you know and you want to know which ones they are and what they sound like and uh, that's the most important thing learning how they sound you don't just want it to be an abstract pattern on the fretboard it's got to be you know it's got to trigger certain uh, kind of uh, emotive things in your mind as you hear them you want to because each of these intervals has its own emotive value and uh, you know every interval has its own emotive value and scales and arpeggios any melodies anything like that chords are the sum total of all the little small emotive values that you get in all the intervals so again pay attention listen to it okay so that's the bass line so now let's just try it with the backing track so little tip to bear in mind when you're playing through this is don't be too pedantic with the fingering um, there's a lot of stretching going on there it's a large area to cover so you don't you know you don't want to be busting your fingers trying to make the fingers because oh well mark told me i was supposed to use this fingering you know if you go for the well the f major seven is always going to be pretty much the same you know first finger fourth finger you know that's all going to be the same um the d minor seven you know that kind of writes itself that's always going to have the first uh, fourth finger second finger uh, but for the G minor 7 you know you could start with the second finger and then move to the first finger or you could play it with the third finger and then move to the first finger you know so it's completely up to you and when you come up on the C7 second finger first finger fourth finger you could use the second finger to fourth finger at the top or you can use the first finger to the third finger, you know, or first finger to the fourth finger if you want to. It doesn't really matter as long as you play the notes and see those patterns there. Um, you know, the fingers, the fingers that you use for the patterns, you know, are less important as long as you get the notes right and it sounds smooth and, uh, you know, the correct feel. Okay, so like this video if it's been helpful and subscribe to get regular updates on all my weekly uh, lesson releases. Also, remember to visit TalkingBass.net to download the lesson material and subscribe for free to gain access to a massive load of exclusive bass resources and content. Okay, see you later.